Um, 501, we will start the May 24th meeting of the Community Television of Santa Cruz Board of Directors. And I guess, Secretary, if you call the roll. Sure. Uh, Chair Lanier. I am here. Uh, Director Maziars. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Mannheim. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Shaw. Here. Director Gudger. Here. Director Granados. Director Warren. Here. Great. Chair Lanier, are you there? He looks, he, froze. Froze. he looks like he's, he's oh, really. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's vice chair? <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> right. <laughs> give him another moment. Uh, oh, wait. I, well, oh, he's, he's disappeared. Like he's going to rejoin. That was good. All right, I'll, I'll, I can call for oral communications. Uh, in, in our chair's absence, I will uh, ask if there's any person who wants to address the board during oral communications. Uh, must be directed to, to an item not listed on the today's consent or regular agenda. Must be within the jurisdiction of the board. Um, is there any member of the public on this meeting? I don't see any. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can move on to item number three, consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent and regular agendas. Are there any from the board? Uh, it looks like Director Gudger has something. Yes, I would like to ask the chair if we could move item 10, the oral report of the executive director up to the very first item. I mean, uh, yeah, up to, uh, I guess it would be, I don't know how you do this. 5A, but not in the consent agenda, in the regular agenda. Oh boy, that's I don't know. acceptable if... with the board. Uh, does any board member have any objections to that? No. All right. Well, if if uh, everybody agrees to that, then uh, let's make item, sorry, you said it's item 10. We'll make it item 5A. I'll inform our chair if and when he returns. But but not part of consent, right? It's correct. Just okay. All right. So that's on the regular agenda. Okay. Maybe it should be five Z. Five Z. Five Z. Let it be. Okay. Um, or five Z, as my Canadian friend would say. So I guess we can move on to the consent agenda then. Um, there's items four and five. Uh, item four is to approve the board meeting minutes of April 26, 2021. Uh, and item five is to approve the finance committee recommendations to accept April 2021 financial reports. Um, do we have any comments uh, from the board on the consent, consent agenda? Yes, Director Gutter. Um, I hate to do it, but there's a statement in the minutes that I don't understand what it means. I think okay. it's just a typo. Let me um, see if I can, I didn't, let's see. It's near the end of item seven. It says Director Hall thanked Executive Director Hall and would like more time to think about before sending to governance. Thanks. So oh. I understand, I know who Executive Director is, but even when I replaced that with Reed, I didn't exactly understand that sentence. I think it says, I, I, as I, I'll have to go look, but I, I think it's, it's supposed to be Director Hall thanked Executive Director Reed and would like more time to think about before sending to the government's governance committee. Correct. And committee we were, at the end is missing. Yeah. And we, uh, it was I wasn't all, sure what that before sending to think about before sending what? The, the item. Talking about. The, the, uh, the, the, the speech thing, the speech item, excuse me, really okay. to hate speech. Okay. I can clarify that. I can I can update that to be able. I'll, I'll go back and look at my notes. That was a big item. I, <laughs> I'll well, make, I, I always hate to bring up a change in the minutes, no, but no, it's, it's, that's it's that's definitely confusion. not clear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Gudger. Um, 
did any other board members have any other comments? Uh, Direct uh, Finance Committee Chair Hall, did you want to comment on the Finance Committee? No, things, things are actually working pretty well right now. We're happy to say we watch it. Uh, the committee consists of uh, Chair Lin Ye, Tom Mannheim, myself, and Keith, that we watch it. Uh, just for your information, if you haven't been there, uh, Mel Sweet, who does our accounting, attends. Uh, the only significant thing here was we ended up with two rent payments. So our rent payment category, I won't get into all the details, went up uh, and it'll be going down when it gets to the normal. But so far, we're within budget. We're doing pretty well. Uh, and there are quite a few things going on in terms of uh, broadcasting the county meetings and the city meetings and mostly the city meetings as uh, uh, with the closed captions. And so that was kind of the biggest topic we had last meeting. So anyhow, uh, things are considering where we were a year ago. I could just say hooray. Fantastic. Yes, Director Gudger. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I think it's important to note that the PPP loan was forgiven. So oh, it's, okay. moved, it's moved from the balance sheet to the income statement. I, I did notice that. So so the, those funds actually, uh, oh, well, we already had the funds, but then the official forgiveness of the loan came through. Great, well, that's good news. And the EIDL, EIDL loan is still in process. It'll be for a while. Hopefully by this time next year, we'll. <laughs> yeah. I think we said that last year. <laughs> and if anybody doesn't remember, that's an SBA uh, loan, it has very little interest. And uh, we thought we'd keep the loan in kind of a background position in case we needed it in emergencies. And uh, so far, the process has been rather amazingly slow. So hopefully nobody ever needed these things had any emergencies. That's okay. it for me. Great, thank you. Um, I did also just wanted to comment on the minutes. I mean, the items on the agenda again this month to talk about the hate speech. But um, you know, after the meeting, I you know I tend to do a little review of myself, and and I realized I have a unfortunate tendency uh, after presentations to just dive into my questions. So I, I wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge. Um, Becca's, you know, our executive director's presentation, um, you know, Director O'Driscoll and uh, I think Director Mannheim, uh, others did comment on it and 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 uh, give it praise, but I feel like I was remiss in not um, acknowledging the, the work and the attention and care that went into making that report. So I, I just wanted to say that I, I also really appreciated it and I, I thought Director O'Driscoll really well summed it up but I will echo what you said about how concise it was and yet very thorough and and um, and uh, profound and it looks like our chair is reconnecting so I can hand back the gavel um, while you were gone we appointed you to no uh, <laughs> let's see uh, he may not be well, with it yeah right welcome back chair Lanier um, I, I've been acting as chair in your absence we we um are on the consent agenda now. Uh, we've had some comments from our uh, finance committee members, and I, I was just thanking Becca for uh, her presentation from last meeting uh, on the hate speech item. So uh, we haven't had a motion yet on the consent agenda, so I will hand back the gavel to you if you are ready. Up, oh, but you're muted. You're muted, Director Lanier, Chair Lanier. Okay. Okay. And we are resuming our meeting of the May 24th, uh, 2012 meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television. We had some technical difficulties. We are on a different Zoom address now. Um, but I guess I'll have the secretary call the roll again, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Chair Lanier. I am here. Director Maziers. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Manheim. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Shaw. Here. Director Gudger. Here. Director Granados. Director Warren. Here. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Vice Chair <laughs> Maziars, I will ask your help 
in, uh, I don't have the agenda in front of me. I don't have a printed copy and I'm unable to yep. call it sure. up just yet. If you don't mind um, calling those out. So we have consent agenda, you're muted. I, I was using my space bar to unmute, but then if okay. I go over to Acrobat, then let me just unmute myself here. It's the office is pretty quiet, right? Okay. Okay. So I'm unmuted. Uh, I'll try not to sneeze. So uh, item two is oral communications, and uh, we called that previously, and there was nobody uh, who from the public who wanted to address us. Okay. Um, item three is consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to consent and regular agendas. And, and previously, Director Gudger had requested that we uh, make item 10, the executive director's report, uh, the first item on the regular agenda after the consent agenda. So he recommended 5Z. Um, and as acting chair at the time, I had approved that. So if that's okay, okay uh, nobody I objected. Will concur. Um, and then I, uh, then we moved on to the consent agenda, items four and five um, to approve the board meeting minutes of April 26, 2021, and five to approve the finance committee recommendations to accept April 2021 financial reports. Uh, on item four, Director Gudger had a correction to the minutes um, of a, uh, on the item about the uh, hate speech report. Um, it was Director uh, Hall, had asked, uh, well, Director Hall was, was listed twice instead of Executive Director um, Reed and um, about asking to, to come back to the board before sending it to the Governance Committee. Um, and our secretary had agreed to make those changes, acknowledged the, um, the error. Um, our Finance Committee Chair had given us a brief uh, rundown on the, the finances that were doing pretty well. Um, Director Gudger um, mentioned that um, of note on the financial statements is that the our PPP loan was forgiven. And uh, so those funds are now moved to the balance sheet as income. Is that correct, Director Gudger? From the balance sheet to the income statement. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. And then I'll, I won't repeat my whole, but I just had wanted to comment on that, uh, the hate speech report that, you know, um, I wanted to acknowledge um, Director Reed's um, report and, and how thorough yet concise it was as, as Director Driscoll had mentioned at the time and, and apologize for diving straight into my questions without acknowledging the effort and time and care that went into making that report. And I think that catches right. up, us up. We, right. we didn't have any, we hadn't had any action yet on the consent agenda. Okay, and I'm back up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you for that recap. <laughs> sure. And I've, I've got it. Okay, so no action on the consent agenda yet. We've gone through it. Um, do I? I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move approval with the minutes amended as mentioned. Okay. Um, second. Do we have a second? A second. We have a a move of. A, Move to approve Director Gudger. Move to approve the minutes with the corrections as noted. And was that Director Shaw? Driscoll. Oh, Driscoll. Um, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Moved and approved. We'll now move to the um, regular agenda, and we have moved up the executive director's report. And so, Becca, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thanks very much. This is my report for April. And um, in the category of finance, our 21-22 uh, budget and work plan was approved by the Board of Supervisors. And uh, we are being considered for the California Relief Grant in round six. Um, we're eligible for $15,000. We keep getting pushed around and I believe it is because we got the PPP. So I think they've just put us on the end and um, we might never get it, but uh, we are eligible still. So I keep filling out the forms. Uh, the EIDL, as Joe mentioned, our status is funding and uh, we have provided recently the final banking information they need to actually send us the money. And right after we did that, I got a message from our SBA um, 
person who's, I guess, I don't know what they're calling him, so he's our account executive for a better, no, for a lack of a better term, uh, that she had been transferred somewhere else. So yeah. we don't know. <laughs> she said she would try to keep up with our file until it was finished, but I haven't heard anything from her or the SBA since. I tried calling and there's just a busy signal. You never get a person. So, but um, we won't give up. Uh, we've provided them every single bit of information that they've asked for <clears throat> three times. And I expect they will finally uh, fund us at some point. Um, in the co working center, our break even number, as you know, is uh, $8,333.33. And in April, we earned $8,655, just a little more than we needed. Um, we are about 15.5% ahead of our budget um, at the end of April. So um, that's, that's good, we're ahead. And uh, tours are picking up now. We, have, we got two new members this week. So um, I think by when June 14th rolls around, we'll probably get a lot more people in. We have a lot more activity and um, things are picking up. So we think things are only going to get better. Under paid services, uh, we did 20 government meetings in April and eight webinars. And that will probably pick up as budget um, approaches. There'll be a lot of meetings in June. And... Um, and then nothing in July, <laughs> but there'll be plenty in June. And um, <clears throat> under facilities and equipment, um, the roof has been repaired. We uh, talked to the security company about a plan for cameras. And since this is my April report, that happened in April and it took them until May to actually come up with a plan. Um, just so you know, we've got the plan now. We're working with the landlord. And um, it isn't expensive, and we think we'll probably do it. Um, our telecast equipment, as I explained to you last time, has gotten kind of old. And uh, we, we talked about moving uh, to getting a new system. And because we would have to update our old system anyway, and it's time to pay for um, tax support on those old pieces of equipment. So now is a good time to go ahead and, ch and change them out. Um, uh, Victor is working on a plan to replace that equipment and what we'll be needing exactly to modernize that system so that it works for us well into the future. And so hopefully for, um, we plan by next month to be able to show you that plan. And under the youth grant, so exciting, we've got our uh, first um, round of beta testers. This was a really small group, it was only four kids. And uh, they received their equipment in mid-March and they brought it back in April. Good as new, no problems. Um, we have, uh, I've got a little uh, report on, we did a survey, which I attached for you to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> about, you know, it was only four kids, but they were all different ages. So that was kind of handy to have to have that, um, those different age groups. And they, you can see from some, some of the, the 11 and 12 year olds had really no problem. They were, you know, pretty much cable ready. They could use that equipment and had no issues. There were some, uh, the, the 10 year old had a little bit of an issue with some, with like putting things like together. And I'm not sure whether that was because she had little hands or um, just things were just a little weird for her, but she, um, she did, she, she did not use iMovie. She used a, an app called Clips, which comes on the iPad and she liked that better. So mm -hmm. it may be the younger kids. And this is like a fine line because the 11 year old had no trouble and it could be just child specific as well. So um, we'll keep, uh, we're gonna do a bigger beta test and we'll find out more, but we have made some changes to the kit. We are now marking the tripod uh, so that they can see how the plate goes in. Sometimes they put it in backwards and then dad's had to come and blast it out of there. If we put it in backwards, it's really hard to remove. So um, they had to get help from their dads. And um, there were, uh, we had put in um, a, a list of um, 
little videos that they could watch about this specific product on how it works just in case they forgot or couldn't couldn't get a hold of their teacher and i think that just got list got kind of got lost in the pack so we're improving that we're making it big and laminating it and we're sticking it in there so they can find it and they had a little bit of trouble uploading their videos and um, I went and followed the instructions that we had given them, and they were indeed wrong. <laughs> so we have fixed the instructions, and you could do it, but it wasn't exactly right. You had to use some of your own ingenuity. And um, so we fixed it now, so it's very clear. And we'll just keep making little tweaks as we go along. Um, we're going to be sending 20 kits to Watsonville Parks and Rec this summer for their summer program. We've talked with Capitola, and they're, they're thinking it over. And um, we're still working with Save Our Shores to find some teachers. But we think that the next 20 um, will give us a lot better feedback because they'll be all different ages and um, a big age group. Like, oh, what are they like from the sixth grade through high school? So that's a lot of different ages. And that'll give us a lot. And because the, the, the um, Parks and Rec is going to keep the packs, they're not giving them to the kids. Um, the kids will come in and use them, then may, many more kids than 20 will be able to use the 20 packs. So we should get lots of feedback and um, this will be the acid test. And then we can tweak from there and then really, really release it in a big way. So we're very excited about that. And um, uh, my last thing, oh, oh, on that, in that category of youth grant, um, the, the youth grant committee has been really good about putting this together and kind of figuring out the equipment and tweaking stuff as we go along. And that has been, um, they've done a great job and uh, they continue to be, to be involved as we move forward. And um, I had uh, an opportunity to talk to the um, education committee about an idea. And um, I, want to, I want to put it out there to the full board um, also. And the idea I've been thinking, I know that CTV has many times tried to become involved with Cabrillo and we haven't pulled it off yet. And I'm thinking that it might be a good idea to put a satellite studio there at the, at the, um, at the college. And we do have an education channel, which could be devoted to them. And this would be, of course, they would have to develop a program. So we did, you know, this would take a long time to get going if we wanted to do it. But I think it is a, it would be an amazing legacy to leave behind if we were able to start a television program there or help to be to be a part, to partner with them in creating a television program that um, people could um, learn that as a, as a as a career. And the Bureau of labor statistics says that film and television um, camera people and editors, the um, growth potential for that career is 18% in the next few years. And that is way faster than most. Digital people would, even executives, there are studies that show that people would rather receive information by video than read it, which is kind of scary, but it's true. <laughs> so I think that Hello, Louie. Um, I think that um, it would be an interesting thing for us to do. And um, I would just like you to know that it's being thought about. And I would love to hear what you think about that. And that's uh, the final thing on my report is that we're opening the studio in June. Great. And we'll be, we'll be back in business. And that's, that's my report for April. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just for the record, since we moved that up, is that um, item 5A or are we moving everything down just as we do the minutes? Does anybody? No, that, that was 5Z actually. Z, 5Z, Z, okay. <laughs> okay, or, 5Z. Or Z, so will... or Z if you're Canadian or British. So. Right, okay, thank you, just to be clear. Um, thank you very much, Becca. And let's go on to the um, regular agenda. We have item number six. Report from the Education Committee, and I'll turn it over to the chair, David. Well, um, certainly one of the highlights is, is Becca's idea. And uh, another highlight from our committee meeting really is in Elizabeth's enthusiasm for um, the big change in, in her um, 
career is, is moving from teaching at Cabrillo to being an administrator at COE, where she uh, um, illuminated us on some of the possibilities. And I think that was, that's really wonderful. And um, I think all of the committee members really uh, are willing to dig in our heels and support Elizabeth in those efforts. Um, uh, reaching out to schools, reaching out to Cabrillo is, I, I think, uh, a real highlight of uh, what we discussed. Um, we were delighted that Becca could kind of join us in our committee meeting and uh, you know, talk about that. Um, we, we did discuss uh, what our outreach uh, efforts will be, and um, especially uh, with Cabrillo and uh, being a retired faculty person from Cabrillo, I must say that I would be absolutely delighted if we could get a, a studio at the college. And I think that would uh, just simply be wonderful. Um, and in the regarding those, uh, we are planning on reaching out and have kind of behind the scenes discussion with trustees from both Cabrillo as well as the OE uh, around these efforts and just kind of test the waters. Um, uh, we had some, also some discussion um, around uh, a similar conversation with local funding organizations, community uh, grant organizations. Um, and um, Christina had some thoughtful input re regarding uh, local funding and the areas that we could explore. There were also discussions around uh, how we might be able to generate um, youth civic engagement. Uh, and I had volunteered to discuss or to have conversations with at least one of the board of supervisors uh, about such an effort, um, but it's at very preliminary stages. Um, and um, I think we all have empathy for the stress the teachers are going through right now. Uh, and all of these kinds of changes and uh, how we can support them and uh, making some of these changes. And um, Elizabeth seems to really have her finger on, on those challenges and what, what we might do. So that's kind of summing up. You have a report. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, but certainly be open to your thoughts and ideas on it. Great, thank you. Okay. And if comments? Keith or Elizabeth have any uh, things they might want to add, why please jump in. And and Elizabeth, I love your background. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. That's great. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Director Warren. Uh, let's move on. We'll have a report from the Volunteer Advisory Committee. Sure, I saw Director Hall's hand up though before I- Yeah, I just wanted to thank him. I think it'd be really exciting. Becca's asked any comments and uh, David did. If we could finally make a connection with Cabrillo, that would be a long time goal that everybody's talked about. So it's easy to say go forth, but I just wanted to say go forth. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Director Hall. Great. So in terms of the Volunteer Advisory Committee, we. Um, had a super studio supervisor meeting um, in the packet there's a couple of forms that we were looking at the studio supervisor and the producer having to fill out to try and keep everybody safe uh, as it looks like everything's going to be open june 15th we'll probably revise those forms we may i don't think we're actually going to take people's temperature anymore yeah, I wonder, yeah. uh, a couple other things may change in there uh, I'm probably going to, instead of having a studio supervisor meeting, have a full volunteer advisory committee meeting and see if we can get as many people involved as possible and, and discussing what we're going to do. I don't know if anyone has any comments on the forms other than, like I'm mentioning, some, some lightening up. One other thing I do want to mention, I, I forgot, it wasn't in Becca's report, but she interviewed Supervisor Koenig. Oh. <laughs> 
and it's on Elected Spotlight showing Thursdays and Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. And it's on the YouTube channel. Uh, so if, if uh, she's up for it, I'd like to rope in some more people. Um, Larry, I was thinking the next person might be the mayor of Capitola. I, sure. <laughs> you can check with her. I know. Okay. I mean, she's very proud of the city, so I, I think she'd like to yeah. talk about it. We had her on a, a webinar for the library, the Friends of the Library, uh, showing off the new Capitola Library. And she did a really fine job representing Capitola, and that's why I thought of her. Of course, it would be great to get the mayors of the other cities as well. But that was Have we one. had the mayors of all the other cities? It seems like we had a couple Watsonville mayors. We've had a couple Capitola. We we've had, had one Scotts Cruz. Valley. Yeah, we did Scotts Valley. We did Santa Cruz, but it's been a while. There's a new mayor now. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, those are but all it, options. Yeah, well, we we haven't done Capitola in three years, probably. So it's a good time to do no, that. We did Mike Termini last. Yeah. Um, I just had a comment, if I may, about the uh, the studio guidelines is uh, the, the bit about no food. You know, I know there were certain producers that that, uh, you know, that, that, that was why you wanted to go work for them. because They always had a nice little spread there. So I don't know, they're gonna have to give out gift cards to Chipotle or something to, <laughs> to attract a crew at this point, or uh, maybe uh, handmade masks or something. I don't know. Um, hopefully they'll be resourceful and find another way to reward their crew. Well, considering we're indoors, um, I know restaurants are allowed to be open to some, what, 25% or 50% capacity? 50, I think. Yeah. So I don't know when they're allowed to go to 100%, but at 100%, we probably can't have that restriction anymore. Yeah. I just want to make, there, there are still some different rules between what um, the public can, what you can offer to the public and what you have to do to make sure employees are safe. There's still a little bit of a disconnect between the <laughs> California rules and the OSHA rules. So as a as an employer and even a volunteer, those are kind of the ones you have to really make sure you follow. And I think at this point, the what you're looking at here are, are what's in place. They haven't made changes to those rules yet. So even, even if even if the state you know opens up, Cal OSHA still governs the workplace. So you just got to make sure you uh, whatever we do that we treat because the volunteers functionally are employees from Cal OSHA's point of view. So we have to make sure we we follow those rules. No, I wasn't okay. objecting to that. I was, it's definitely, it sounds like a prudent uh, measure to take for sure. So I'm assuming we can go to Cal OSHA's website and find out what their requirements are? You can't, I, they're actually, they actually had a mean last week and kicked it off another week to, for those rules. So, um, but right now, yes, you can go to Cal OSHA's website and they have a whole frequently asked questions about COVID. <laughs> I think it's about 80 questions now. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm done. All right. Thank you, Director Gudger. Um, now we have, um, I, I put it down as consider a board resolution in support of SB 28, which is the Rural Broadband and Digital Infrastructure Video Competition Reform Act of 2021. Becca, I will turn that over to you, you sent us out some things earlier uh, in the, the week. Um, and I can, we signed, I can. Well, we, we, I know we sent some of us sent letters regarding this. Um, mm. It seems um, maybe Director Hall can speak to this too. It seems that we want to, as a board, um, you know, state our um, opinions on this and and have it move forward. Well, why don't I, uh, I, I probably had a little more time today than Becca did. I actually went through the bill analysis and looked at this. First of all, it's passed out of the, a number of the committees with no, no votes, which uh, was interesting to me. Our state uh, Senator Laird has already voted on it once. And I happened to see uh, John Laird at an event in Live Oak over the weekend. And he said, if we wanted to do anything, it's probably going to be on the Senate floor within a week. So probably anything 
we would want to do if we have any thoughts about this would be in the state assembly because it's moving through the Senate at this point in time. But when I went through the uh, uh, bill, I don't know, uh, have any of you actually gone through the bill analysis yet? Uh, I haven't, it, I've taken a look at some of it. I haven't gone through it closely. It's pretty extensive. It kind of rolls back some of the things that were put in with DIVCA that the state can roll back. Uh, I was surprised. I, I thought it would be a lot more generic, but what it does do is bring a little more local, not control it as much, but if a cable company doesn't actually provide the services that they promised to do, this bill sets up a system with the PUC where this uh, uh, jurisdiction can go to the PUC. Now, whatever the PUC does, who knows? But uh, I think in terms of uh, getting services to where they promised and not done, this is probably a pretty good step forward, whether it actually makes it out based on what we've read from Becca, who knows, but it's gotten out of a couple of the committees with no, no votes, which means there are some Republicans supporting it. Mm -hmm. So I think they probably have all heard about different needs and different problems. And this may be one way to support it in kind of a very incremental way. Okay. Um, Director Mazias. Um, for either uh, uh, Executive Director Reed or um, or Joe, uh, Director Hall, uh, it's, uh, in the email earlier in the week, Becca, I believe you said that uh, the, the, the bill does include something about uh, requiring uh, cable companies to provide high def, high definition feeds for public access. Did I remember that correctly or? Yeah, it's part, if they have promised to do that, they're supposed to do it if they haven't done it already. Oh, if they've promised, but yeah, it doesn't, so it doesn't to, require they them to. promise, they don't have to. I see, mm -hmm. I see. And there is, but they actually, Comcast has told us they would do that for us. We just haven't done it yet. Okay, well, hopefully when we get our new uh, infrastructure, the new equipment, so, that'll, yeah. that'll make it more uh, practical. Yeah, well, right now, because of the way like it upgrades and it, it, it ups and downs the video, our video would be a tiny thing inside a box because it would have been converted so many times. So uh, Victor doesn't want to do that. <laughs> but um, with this new system, we would make that switch. Yeah, I've, I've always thought it was a shame to shoot this beautiful high definition footage in the studio and then send it out, you know. Yeah. For it to be down converted and then up converted. Letterboxed <laughs> standard def, yeah. 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 The other thing that this does, I think, is that is interesting is that it it takes away, there's an amendment, there's something in the old law that says that the um that the cable company can never be called a utility, and they're taking that out. Mm. So they could they could uh. do that. But they're giving them places where if they, they haven't said that's what they'll do, but there's the option there. And they want, they think that um, the internet, and they're calling it video, is um, important because as COVID happened, people needed it to get to their jobs. They needed to be able to work online. They needed to be able to make vaccine appointments. They need to see teledoctors. And uh, you can't, they, they are say, they're making the case that you can't live in a 21st century without it. And that um, they, don't, they don't build out enough of the rural areas where there are fewer people and um, or or lower economic status people, then they are not really providing everyone, and they think it should be everybody should be able to have it, and it should be affordable for everyone. So that yeah. that is yeah. The, yeah, and I think this is kind of the transition of uh, cable from entertainment to uh, life support now, as opposed to that. And there was a lot in there about uh, how the cable operates in rural areas and how they don't collect and collect information. It's a very detailed bill. I was surprised when I got into it. I thought, oh, this will be something. Uh, I had different thoughts. And after I got through it, I said, well, this is a pretty major piece of legislation in California. Hmm. Keith, did you, have you looked into it at all? Okay. I mean, I read a summary of it. I, I, like I asked Joe, I wondered if it needs to go through um, the legislative committee of the DCC for further analysis. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be interesting, but for our group, 
I would, I would recommend we pass a resolution supporting it. I think it'll serve rural areas in the state and to a certain degree in our county. I don't think some of the things they're addressing are quite as critical in our county as they are in the Central Valley. But uh, still, I think it would make a big change for uh, the California in a positive way. And I think the cable companies can probably um, adjust to this and still thrive in a very prosperous way. So if, if, it, if, if nobody else wants to say anything, I'll make a motion. I actually did want to add something, if that's OK. Oh, yeah, right. there was there was actually an article earlier this week regarding the uh, one of the um, internet providers actually pulling out of well, not maintaining rural infrastructure up in some of the fire areas that were so oh. you know that was so important. They basically said that they're and you know if you've been involved in IT, the, the copper infrastructure they're just not going to maintain anymore. So I think the more you know when we talk about rural, we've, we we do see this. This is really kind of where the digital divide exists right now, you know, you know, they're just not. And so I think the more we can get in to make sure that, you know, if, if firm A or B decides they want to pull out the, the jurisdictions have the ability to get someone else in there. And I think that something, I think the, if the board could support that, I think it'd be very important. So I, I just had a me. question about the port, uh, is it a point of order? So, uh, I didn't see a text of a resolution attached to the agenda. Maybe I missed it. So are we just ask, are we directing our executive director or asking our board chair to, to write a letter in support? Uh, so we don't have to approve the actual verbiage. Is well, we correct? can go either way. Uh, I don't, I, I don't have any real particular uh, idea on that. I think a letter would be fine. I'll be glad to write a resolution. Uh, but I think either way, they have the both both have the weight of the board, so it's up to the chair. Well, the the um, yeah, we did not have a resolution already drafted. Um, the problem I think with the resolution is, would we need to circulate it? We we don't want to wait until the next meeting. Would we need to circulate that then and just um, can we approve it that way or just people sign well, off on it? I I think we just do a letter at this point. Okay, well, let's do that. We can we can send a letter um, under or over the executive director and the chair's names on behalf of the board in support of this. I think we have um, um, consensus here, but we can we have a motion on the floor, and I'll entertain a second. The director Gudger. Well, I'll second it, but I want to know who the letter's to. Uh, it's going to go to the author of the bill. And it'll go to uh, our two local rep uh, representatives, uh, Senator River Stone and State Senator Laird. What about Assembly Member Rebus? Yep, that's true too. He represents the south end of the county, so I can go to him so let's, too. Let's put him on there too. Yeah, okay. and the other thing after we vote on this, I have one other sense of direction too, and but I'll talk about that after the motion. Okay, so I okay. second it. All right, we have a motion and a second to um, send a letter communicating the board's uh, opinion or the board's feelings on SB 28, I believe it is. Let me double check that. Um, the Rural Broadband and Digital Infrastructure Act. And um, it'll be signed by both the chair and the executive director on behalf of the board. And I guess let's call a roll on this. Yes, um, Chair, o or I'm sorry, um, Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Shaw. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director Maziars. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Laurent. Yes. Chair Chair Lanier. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. And. Um, Joe? Uh, um, just one other thing. I thought it appropriate, and I'll be willing to do a few phone calls that if the chair and the executive director, we might want to meet with Assembly Member Stone, since this probably by the time we get to it, this will be out of the Senate. So any committee work that needs to be done would be done in the State Assembly. So I thought it'd be good for us to, we may not be able to meet with him, but we at least have a meeting with uh, 
his district director to let him know our support and ask if there's any other flexibility points they can put in that might help Santa Cruz County. Okay, great. That's a good idea. Um, good in terms, uh, in terms and of- And I'll write the, the letter too, don't worry. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. In terms of drafting the letter, if you would do that, and then we yeah. can take a look at that and, and send that out. Thank you very much, Director Hall. Um, we move on now to number nine. This is a continuation of the discussion we began last month on the rules and practices regarding to hate speech. Folks wanted to think about it a bit and um, come back and discuss it. Anybody wish to um, well, thoughts? Director Chair, Chair Lanier, um, I actually don't have any additional thoughts. Uh, but I, I just did, I did re recall that Director Granados had requested some time to think about it, and so I don't know if if she would appreciate being part of this discussion. I don't know if we want to discuss it now or 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 table it till our next meeting. Um, but I'll, well, I'll you're see right. what the board says. Yeah, you're right. She had asked about that. Um, I think that's a good point, and I would I'd be willing to um, table it. We don't. It's not. It's important. It's not you know time urgent. Uh, really, but it's something that we can um, work on. So if the board agrees, I think let's put that off another month and we can discuss it again. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Thank you. Um, we have already had the oral report of the executive director. So we'll move on to um, oral report of the board chair. I don't have a formal report. I just wanted to point out that we have one vacancy um, on our board now, and we have one will be coming up in November, Director Mannheim will um, cycle off. And we may have, um, forgive me, I forget. Director Gudger, you were, you had mentioned we might have another one um, coming up. Anyway, my, my point is just that we um, sort of put our minds to thinking about the composition of the board. We have a really great board right now and um, continuing that. So as we think ahead towards who might be nominated, who would like to be on and um, maintaining a um, diversity of, and a mix of geographical areas um, and age and background and, and things like that, um, I think is important for our board. I'm prompted by some of these thoughts, by one, that we've got some opportunities to get more people on the board and two, um, the contretemps over the O'Neill Odyssey case where there was some um, controversy over the makeup of the board and some unpleasant feelings there. I think, I don't think we have anything like that on this board. We have a great board and I just like to keep it that way. So if we think ahead towards how we would like to um, have folks join us. That's the, the size of my report. Any comments? All right. Um, board members, staff requests for specific items to appear on the next meeting's agenda. We have one, which will continue item number nine about rules and practices regarding hate speech. Any other thoughts for the agenda next meeting? All right, any announcements? You know, thoughts on the next meeting and not an yeah. announcements. I would leave a little time for the hate speech discussion. Uh, just, you know, if there are a lot of other things, uh, you know, you as chair can decide how to, to do it, but uh, that's going to take a while, no matter what, what we say or do or think about. Okay, yeah, good point. I'm making a note of that. And we don't want to, yeah, we don't want to rush through it and take it, we do want to take it seriously. Um, all right. And I, we are to that point of the afternoon, the adjournment. I will indicate a motion to adjourn. I'll move. So moved by Director Gudger. Second. I'll do a second. All right. Director Hall. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Thanks, Bye. everybody, for Bye. persevering um, through our uh, funny technical things. And um, we did it. We made it back. <laughs> so nice to Thank see you. you all. Thank and you. We'll, um, Thank See you, you next month. All right. Take care, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. bye.